All right, if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 37. As you're turning there, let me just update you. This morning I got an update from Singapore. Uh, the church over there had about, they're running about 276 to, to 300. Had 22 new people there in Singapore, and uh, um, 39 people came forward for Jesus Christ and, and, and uh, left their Buddhism and went to come to Christianity. And Song P, who was a brother to Kim, who Kim's a pastor in Singapore. Song P started a church in uh, Yangon, and uh, there uh, they had 127 people there this morning, so they're cranking. And and uh, then the church up in Thailand, I mean up in the middle of Burma, it had 147, and there was also many who got saved there. They said, so just some good things going on all around, and. Uh, uh, it's just good to hear some good news because you don't hear that a whole lot anymore. Psalms 37, 1 through 8. Do not fret because of evildoers. Boy, that's a big word, and it? Don't fret because of evildoers. Uh, do not, uh, be not envious toward wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Man, dwell in the land. Hallelujah. We're here. Let's go ahead and dwell in it. Let's, let's build up. Let's, let's dip. So let's grow. Verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I've just taken that two ways. I've taken it that when you start delighting yourself, having a good time in the Lord, He places desires inside there, and then also He also fulfills the desires. And don't ask me, I don't know how, I don't know. It's just like He, you know, just like little Carter, there's the things already been placed in His heart before the foundation of the earth. And just like was uh, placed in Deb's heart, you know, to, to work inside the, the church ministry. Uh, but there's also desires just... Every desire that God gives is a good one. Every desire that God gives is a good one. Now, thank God we don't have the same desires, do we? You know, and yet we live in a world that really wants to, you know, like you know, it's been already said, wants to conform us, you know. Uh, we, we don't dress the same in here, do we? And we don't do the same things. Dan, would you stand up for me, please? Yeah, you, yeah. And raise your right sleeve. <laughs> we don't do the same things. That is one awesome little lion on his right arm there. <laughs> Taking off a picture that they actually took in Africa. And uh, he put it on his right arm. And uh, the mate's going to come on the left arm later. And then there's going to be Dan in between them. So uh, <laughs> give him a hand. He's already got a lion on his arm. You probably won't ever see me raise my right sleeve <laughs> and show you anything but a bare arm. But, we're, but God places different desires in all of us. And what a day of freedom when we stop trying to get everybody to have the same desires and to be the same way and work in the same place. And every desire that God gives is good. There's not a higher calling for somebody that's, that's working in the church. There's not a higher calling for a pastor. It's, we're all called and by God, and it's all good. And, you know, the worst thing you do is ditch what God's placed inside of you to go get something somebody else's because you compared yourself to them and thought that was a higher calling. That's, that's so wrong. In fact, I will just throw this out and I'll quit it. But uh, when I get around pastors, I usually tell a story before I find out their story. Uh, because if they tell me their story, then it's really going to look at it as a serious rebuke. But I, I tell the story about being with a man who actually, uh, down south, a big pastor, and he, uh, you know, big, I don't know, I didn't, he was pretty big. Um, <laughs> but he had a large church, had a lot of influence, and he actually ran, before George W. Bush ran for president, he ran with him, you know, uh, to exercise. And he, he told me there, I was just talking to him about this, this is quite a few years ago, obviously, and I, he said, you know, well, he says, yeah, George and I ran together, and, you know, he's a good man. And he said, but I was a little upset with him because his son was, was the same age as my son. They were 16, and they became pals. But he said, I was kind of disappointed because my son got influenced by George W. Bush and uh, decided to be a lawyer instead of a pastor. And I tell that story, and then I say, um, 
then I get my, I just let my emotions get a little hot, you know, like I do. And I just, you know something, I said, I, I told pastor, I said, how dare you? How dare you? How dare I what? How dare you decide what your ch children should be? How dare you even have an opinion about what your children, how dare you even think about what you want your children to be? It's like, they're not yours, they're God's. And he's placed things inside of them. And you, as a parent, you find out which way they're bent. As a, you know, train up a child in the way that they should go is not the way you think they should go. It's you find out where God has bent them and, where he's, and then you do everything you can to aid them to find that destiny that's inside of them. But you, dear God, don't pick it. And you don't have an, and don't ever tell your children, I always wanted you to be this. How dare you become a God to them when, and replace the God of their life? And I say it kind of firmly because most of us need to hear that. Kind of firmly. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to say another real firm word here. Stop lying. <laughs> okay, you can't. <laughs> Gee. We'll give you room to grow. <laughs> Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness like the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. You know, everybody says, get out of, you know, and I, and I know there's an element of truth here, okay? But, uh, you know, get out of the comfort zone. Get out there in the deep, you know, and, and there's an element. But, you know, I, let me just say what the Lord said to me once. He said, would you please stay in the comfort zone? After hearing lots of sermons about get out of your comfort zone, he, I heard him say, would you please stay in the comfort zone? I said, what? He said, would you please stay in the zone of the comforter? I have sent the comforter to you. Stay with him. Stay in the zone where the comforter is. And all of a sudden I go, wow, that changes my whole perspective in life. I don't have to be somebody that's stepping out of the boat all the time and everything. listen I just need to listen if you step out of the boat you better be stepping out of the boat with the Holy Spirit or you're going to sink and you better if you're going to take the mountain then you better take it with the Spirit of God not on your own otherwise you get defeated Stay in the comfort zone. We, you know, we, we, we did everything to pressure ourselves and to try to be heroes, but the truth is God just says, will you trust me and will you walk with me and I'll make your way actually easier that, than you can imagine. We stress so much by, by fretting over evildoers and, and uh, thinking we got to get all stirred up and change the whole world. We don't have to. We don't have to fix the, the wrongdoers. We need to stay with the comforter and stay in that zone. By the way, when you're in the comfort zone, you do phenomenal things that are very courageous because you don't even know that you're, you're, you're in dangerous territory. It's so wonderful to be in his presence and you feel such a peace. Man, I've done some, I've done some things in, in my life in ministry that uh, it wasn't until later on that I look back on it and I go, wow, I, I should have been scared out of my mind. I just, I tell you, when you're, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, it's like you're, the Bible compares it to, to being drunk on wine. You, you're, you're courageous and you don't know why. You can stay in that comfort zone and you can be just free to be who you are. And others will say, oh my, aren't they something? Boy, aren't they courageous? And you're going to say, no, it was really simple. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil doing. Hallelujah. Now take your Bibles and turn with me to Colossians, the third chapter. There's so much more in that 37, uh, Psalms 37, that God delights in the prosperity of us. That, that's just not talking about money. It's talking about prospering and peace and joy and goodness and, and relationships. Psalms, uh, or what did I say, Colossians? Colossians 3. We get in verse 1. If then you have been raised up with Christ Jesus... That means if you believed in him and accepted him as Lord and Savior and, and accepted the, you know, the, the truth that he really did die for. If you there, uh, have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. 
Set your mind on these things above, not on the things that are here on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Boy, that is a safe place. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Don't try to get everything uh, accounted for down here. Don't, you know, don't worry about how people are, are rating you right now. You know, there's going to be a time when you get to be revealed with him, and it's going to be awesome. Don't, don't worry how, you know, people worry so much about what people think of them. You know, that's been, that, will, that was one of the biggest hindrance in my life, was worrying about what people thought of me. It affected everything I did. It affected my schoolwork, affected my relationships, affected every, my thinking at night, uh, my attitudes, everything. And there's a good one. You know, when Christ is revealed, you'll be revealed with him in the glory. That's, a, that's worth waiting for. Verse 5, therefore, consider the members of your body. And you remember last week we talked about James, you know, you know when you encounter various trials, you know, consider it all joy. That means, you know, look at it and consider it joy. Now, now he's telling us to consider something else. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to, uh, to immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, greed, which amounts to idolatry. You know, also here, let me just throw it in. All things that are evil, consider yourself dead to. Consider yourself dead to shame. Consider yourself dead to fear. Consider yourself dead to uh, comparisons. Just say, nah, I'm out of that now. I'm out of that now. I'm free from all that now. I don't have to, you know, uh, I don't have to be, you know, little kids right away, they're, they're saying, well, Johnny made fun of me. You're out of that. You're, you're dead to all people's opinions. You don't have to now try to win people's approval or, or, or get, you know, be the top of the class to feel good about yourself. Man, what a freedom. For it is a count of these things that the wrath of God will come, and, and in them you also once walked. Say, I once walked in all those things, but not anymore. When you were living in them, but now you also put them aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Stop lying to one another, and since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him, and a renewal which there is no distinction between Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free man, but Christ is all and in all. And so, as those who have been chosen by God, you've been chosen by God. Isn't that awesome? You know, I know that we just sang a song, uh, you know, what can I say and what can I give you? I'll give you my heart. But the beautiful thing is, he chose me. I didn't ask to be on this team. How many of you remember asking to be on a team? That was a humbling thing, wasn't it? It was so much more fun just to have the team captains choose you first. Wasn't that a big relief? I don't know if you, you know, some of you experienced it. Some of us never got, got to experience that when the team captains chose you first. <laughs> he was always looking, <laughs> okay, John, we'll take you instead of the two girls. <laughs> Thanks. He chose me. He chose you. He chose you because he wanted to. Not because you started acting right. Not because you got you know got your act together finally. He chose you before you had. He chose you before you could think like Carter. He chose you. Man, that's a good thing to get, meditate on. Think on these things. The Bible says, set your mind on these things. And so, as those who have been chosen by God, holy and beloved, what are you? Holy, and you're beloved. Put on a heart of compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also you uh, should you. And beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, which indeed you were called to one body, and be thankful. Man, it goes on. I just hate to almost stop, but... Uh, I'll, let's throw verse 17 in. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to him and to God our Father. Put on. Barry McGuire was a rock and roll star that uh, uh, was pretty crazy, and he, and, uh, he was a plumber that uh, had a great deep voice, and he had, somehow he got uh, met somebody that heard his voice, and all of a sudden he was thrown in, and, 
his first band, or the big band that he was with was the New Christian Minstrels, which most of you won't remember, but, uh, uh, he, but he traveled, in, and uh, for all those of you that are from the 60s and 70s, uh, and those of you that love the music, the best music that's ever been on the face of the earth, um, <clears throat> You know, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, all those were his buddies. Janis Joplin, Led Zeppelin, all those guys were his friends. He partied with them. My aunt asked him, he came up here after he got saved. He got saved about when he was 34. And when he was about 35, we had him up here in Vail, South Dakota. We had him sing concerts in Newell and Vail and Sturgis. And, and he stayed in my house a couple days. He's a big burly guy, had a big red beard that our cat slept in. <laughs> I wanted to kill that cat. But he liked cats, so he didn't mind. Um, Anyway, I got to spend some time with him. He really had a huge impact on my life. And um, my aunt asked him what kind of drugs he t- took once, you know, and she was a nurse or whatever. And, and he was kind of evasive, and, uh, you know, and, and she finally said, well, did you take? And she started naming off things. And he just said, I, I don't know. I think so. I don't know. And afterwards, he told me, he says, hey, listen, when they brought the drugs out on a plate sometime, we just took them. We didn't ask. <laughs> we weren't the educated druggies. Uh, we just did it. And so he says, I really don't know what I've taken. And I didn't care. And, uh, and so then he was doing a concert here in Sturgis, and uh, one, of the, one of the cheerleaders afterwards, one of my friends walked up to him afterwards, and I was just standing there. And she said, Barry, I understand you gave up drugs, and you know, all that was you know, messing up your life. But she said, you didn't give up pot, did you? And I was just standing there, and I, uh, you know, she was about a junior at that time, and he says, he, you know, and this is the mentality she had. And, and before he could say anything, she says, man, nobody gives a pot. <laughs> it was like, that's basic food group. Uh, you know, that's the substance of life. And that was her mentality. That's where, by the time she was a junior in high school, that's, that was her norm. That was her, you know. And I, I was sitting there, and, and he, he, I, I was so blessed the way he taught. He, he didn't put her down. He didn't, he says. And I just about said her name, but I won't. Some of you in here know her. But anyway, she, he just said, "Hon, you know when you're up in the up here in the north and it's blizzardy, you put on a big parker and you just you you snuggle into that thing." And he says, "And it's warm." And uh, he said, "You're not about to get rid of that thing uh, when it's 20 below zero, right?" And she says, "Yeah, that's right." He said, "But hon, when you get down in Florida and you get on the beach and that sun hits you." And all that warm air hits you, and that water's warm. He says, the last thing you really want is that old parker on. He said, you shed it pretty fast. He said, when I came into the love and the light of Jesus Christ, all that you're talking about, including pot, I put off because it just wasn't doing anything for me anymore. And I thought, what a good picture. And that good picture wasn't like condemning her, just saying, you know, you wait till you come into the heat. When it come, you keep hold of that Parker right now. You need that thing. You're going to freeze without it. But when you come in, when you really meet him, and when you spend time with him, you're not going to want it. It's not going to be something you have to give up. It's something you want to put off. The beautiful thing about our walk is that we can put off and we can put on. Hallelujah. So stop lying. Let's turn to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. You know, sometimes we tell the kids that they need it right properly and, and do it neatly. And, and I'm a real stickler when I'm working with kids. I really want them to, I really do. I, I, if I sit down and hey, I'm making me erase words, right? You know, and I don't do a lot with the kids, but when I do come in once or they ask me questions, and I'm hey, erase, that, that's sloppy. And it's, it's so amazing because um, I'm really messy. I mean, I can write really good. I, I've written sometimes where I slow myself down and I've written, a, and I've had... Uh, even my own daughter said, Who's, who wrote this, Dad? Because she couldn't recognize it. Uh, but generally speaking, I get in a hurry. My mind's faster than my hand, and I'm real sl- and it's so bad I can't read it myself. Uh, someday I'm going to go to school and have me for a teacher. Verse 17. This I say, this is Ephesians 4, 17. This I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart, and they have become callous and they have given themselves over to sensuality. 
but for the practice of every kind of impurity and greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way, if indeed you heard him and have been taught by him, in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust and deceits, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been cre- which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness and truth. This new you has been created in the likeness of God. It's been, it's been created the way it should be. It's been created in a holiness or a separation from all other things and in truth. Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry. I like that. I like being angry. Hey, isn't that what it says? It didn't say don't be angry here. It said be angry. Now, I don't know if, I don't know. You can take it, you, you look at it, you, you, you decide. Andrew, when he teaches, Andrew Womack, when he teaches this, he says this. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Most of us probably look at that and say, you know, before the sun goes down, get rid of your anger. Andrew has a different take on that, you know. But then it's Andrew, what does he know? <laughs> it's only reaching a billion people every day. But anyway, he says, be angry and don't let the sun go down without be- staying angry. Actually, it makes more sense than the English there. Keep staying ang- keep angry. And do not let the devil have an opportunity. Let him who steals steal no longer, but rather let him labor, performing with his own hands what is good, in order that he may have something to share with those who have need. And then let's go one more verse, Psalms 40. Psalms 4. Psalms 4 4. Now, stop lying. Stop lying. Speak the truth. If I said that, and I have said that, I don't know what you were, what were you thinking when I said stop lying? What do you lie about? <laughs> Actually, once about once in a while about a score too. <laughs> There's a rule on the golf course that if there's white posts there and it goes across them, that's called out of bounds and you have to re-hit it. But Dan and Mike have their own rules, and that is if you can find the ball, you can hit the ball right there and you don't have to take any points off. So stop lying. <laughs> what else do you lie about? You're really not five foot tall. Five foot one? No. Stop lying. Hey, I'd love to go. I'll see if I can make it. No, you didn't even have, no, you weren't going to go. You know you weren't going to go. You, I'll pray about that. You aren't going to pray about that. Those are just nice little words. Stop lying. I'm not here to really talk to you about that. Go ahead and keep lying if you want to and all that stuff. All men are liars. Most women Rich Iverson used to always hate that when I said that. I'm not sure why. Psalms 4.4. 4. Tremble. My side note says, with anger or fear. Tremble with anger or fear and do not sin. You know what sin means? Don't mess up. Don't make a mistake. Don't fail. Now, sometimes we look at it like, oh, it's telling me I can't sin. Do you know, that's like saying, 
having your teacher say, don't get an F. And you go, oh, rats, I wanted to get an F. Most of us don't want to get an F. Okay, most of us don't want to fail. And when, when the Bible says don't sin, start looking at it just a different as saying, he's saying stop failing, stop losing, stop. And he's not saying it like, you loser. He's saying, hey, stop that. In other words, he is giving you permission and he's giving you power to stop losing. Isn't that awesome? He's given you an opportunity to win. And it's like he's saying, okay, here's how you win and here's how you lose. And it's your choice. But I tell you, don't pick losing. <laughs> That's when he says stop sinning. And most of us think, oh, I am a sinner. I'm messed up. I can't, I can't quit it. You know, and it's just like you're looking at it totally backwards. You can't do it on your own, but because he said so, you can now stop losing. Tremble with anger or fear and do not sin. Meditate, and my side reference says, speak in your heart upon your bed and be still. Speak in your heart. Stop lying in your heart. Stop it. Lay it aside. Put that old heavy coat off and put on a new one. Put on the truth and speak the truth in your heart. What am I talking about? You know, we say out loud so many things. Well, I'm not doing very good. Well, I'm just a pathetic, I'm pathetic there. You know, well, you know, it's, you know, we say so many lies. How about this one? Well, I'm only human. What a lie. You know? You're not only human. You are wall to wall Holy Ghost. You are, a, you are born of God. You have God's DNA inside of you. You are a child of God, born of, born of the Spirit of God. You are created right the way you should be. You are created holy, perfect. You are created unique. Holiness actually to me has more, more of a, not just like you don't walk wrong. It means you walk the way separated. It's like what David said. Every one of us has got different desires God has placed in you. And when, God, when you're walking holy, Holy, you're walking in those things that are unique to you and not to, to the group. In our culture right now, everything is trying to make everybody the same. You know, even when you come out to the rally to be different, they all look the same. Right? They all leave their suits in their offices and they all put on black leathers and they all come out here to be different. But there's 600,000 of them looking the same. And it's like what he said, when he says you are holy, it means you are very unique and nobody's like you. Go ahead and be that. Stop trying to, to conform to other people. We say so many lies in our heart. Well, I'm just not doing very good. I'm only human. I make a lot of mistakes. Well, I'm not very good at that. Well, I have no discipline. I used to say I have no discipline all the time. The Lord reminded me about this the other day. And I was complaining to him way back in Vail. I said, Lord, why did you pick me to be a pastor? I have no discipline. And he said, Lord, you know, he says, you keep saying that, but it, he said, it's a lie. I said, well, look at my life. And he said, yeah, but look at my truth. He said, you don't work for discipline. You don't earn it. You don't figure it out. He said, I gave it to you. I placed it inside you as a gift. And I'm here to say, stop lying. Stop, stop speaking all the negative lack in your heart. Stop lying. The truth, listen, the truth is, if you believe in Jesus, you're a brand new creature, and you're holy, and you're righteous, and you're faithful, and you're prosperous, and your checkbook has nothing to do with it. Well, I'm broke. No, you, stop lying. Well, I'm lonely. Stop lying. That's the old man that you can put off. The new man has all these things already there. They're yours. And by the way, you can say, well, again, what I said to the Lord, I said, take a look at my life. Take a look at my track record. And he says, why don't you look at this? Why don't you look at what's going to be forever? 
Well, I'm less than five foot. You're not going to be less than five foot forever. You're going to get shorter. <laughs> we might hit four. I was just talking to John about the pilots that had to eject out of that B-1 bomber. You know, I said, man, what a decision to make. You know, I mean, uh, you know, all of a sudden things are going wrong. And he said, the thing lit on fire, a few other things. But anyway, the, you know, hey, you know, it's not like, oh, I think we'll eject. Take a ride. I mean, you've got a $300 million plane that you're flying and things are going bad. When do you make that call to say, let's ditch this thing and get out? I don't know. I just personally think that had to be a pretty big decision. Not just hit the button. And then he told me something I didn't know. He says, he said, you're probably an inch shorter when you get done hitting the button. Because the G's that that thing forces you out of that plane with is going to slam your old spinal cord right together, man. It's, like, it's not like, whoo, a roller coaster ride. It's like, Bruh. So you don't just hit that button just for jollies. What is the truth about your life? It's not this temporal world. It, this everything is subject to change now. Your, your checkbook, your friends, your relationships, your body. It's all going to change it. You can't say, what well, you know, whatever. But truth is something that means forever. And the truth is, you are chosen by God. He lives inside of you. It has nothing to do with your track record of how you're doing right now. It has nothing to do with your outburst. You know, we walked in those things, and Paul, you know, the writers of the Bible are saying, and you can still walk in those things. That's why he's saying you can stop, put, put it off, and put on something new. But there is indicated there, even as a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, you can do all these carnal things. You can do all these things that are missing the mark. But it still doesn't change you who you are. You still were made by God righteous, and that's the way it is. That's the truth. Stop lying to your heart. If there's ever a place to stop lying, go ahead and lie to me about how many times you tapped the ball and didn't count it as a stroke. <laughs> that's okay. I don't care. But stop lying to your heart and tell the heart the truth. That God did an awesome work inside you and made you a brand new creature and made you right and made you full of wisdom and made you full of the, having the mind of Christ and stop looking at your circumstances, start, stop looking at your track record, stop looking backwards, start looking forwards and just say, this is who I am, nothing can change that. That what God has given to me, no one can take away. He's given me a perfect... And you know, if you stop lying to yourself and start speaking the truth, in your heart, and the heart is where everything in your life is produced... How many of you have ever, ever pulled weeds for somebody else? Like mom, dad, okay, and then for yourself, okay? How many of you really love pulling weeds? I got to admit, I do. I still do. I love killing them. I love seeing that root come out and, and think, it's going to die. Hallelujah, it's going to die. Even on the golf course, there's been a thistle right by the, the uh, toilet. And uh, I, it's for, been there for a month, and, I, and uh, you know, it's got the real pricklies, and I think, I ought to pull that thing. Well, I'm not that caretaker out here. If they don't want to, do, the other day I couldn't take it. I had my glove on, I said, I'm going to pull that thing. I did. Went right through my glove and stuck me. <laughs> and I pulled that thing up by the wrist and I said, there, die! So I like pulling weeds. <laughs> but not so much that I want to pull a lot of them. Do you know every time you just blather out the mouth, every time you just lit your mouth, blah, 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 blah. I'm a lousy golfer. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I can't get up. I know, whatever it is, whatever you got. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You're like going out in your garden and grabbing a handful of weed seed and going <laughs> all over the place. Now, as much as I like pulling weeds, I do not want to pull them the rest of my life. I like to see them die. That's why I like to pull them. I don't like to plant them. But you realize every time you just let your mouth rattle on anything it wants to say about you, you're just throwing weed seed out there that you're going to have to pull up sometime. Stop. Just stop. Well, I can't. Yes, you can. Stop lying to your heart and start speaking the truth to it. And every time you speak the truth, it waters that's there and plants new seeds. 
I'm a, I'm a winner. I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I'm not broke. Because, man, how can you be broke when you own it all? Huh? How can you be, you know, and you say, well, I don't, you know, I don't look like I'm rich. Well, just step back a little bit. We have friends that are already stepped out of their bodies and they're, go join them for a moment and look and see what they see. And I guarantee you, they're not up in heaven saying, boy, I wish I hadn't lost my hair when I was on earth. It sure made me look ugly. I guarantee you they're not saying that. Well, I wish I would have lost some more weight down there. No, they're not saying that. Why? Because they see the truth. They see what they really are. And you and I have the opportunity, while we're down here, to grow, as Deb said. And how do you grow? By speaking the truth to your heart. You know, lay down on your bed and speak the truth. Wake up in the morning, speak the truth. In the middle of the day, stop and speak the truth and just say, this whole world's going to change, but I will not change. I am a child of God. You know, uh, I was talking to Chad and Jenna, and uh, they were mentioning that how I spoke before they left that, uh, you know, uh, I just felt like maybe God would do something right here that might affect Washington, D.C. You know, and uh, they said, you know, that just when we got to France, we realized Washington, D.C., America, literally affects the whole world. They are constantly, said, when we're in France, they are constantly looking at America and what we do. You can't print a t-shirt over here without having it within 10 days being printed all over the world. Philosophies and thoughts and ideas, it's, it's insanity. And she said, boy, she said, all of a sudden I realized, man, what Pastor John said was, would be such a miracle. If we'd actually touch Washington, D.C., we'd touch the whole world. If we touch anything, it spreads all over, the, you know. And let me just close with this, that God gave me these words uh, years ago. He said, think big and do small things. It's such a powerful word. Think big, but do small things. You know how you're going to do, do a big thing? Keep doing the small things. This whole society right now is, is looking at being superstars. Everybody's trying to be a superstar, getting a super gulp drink, getting a bigger cup, getting a bigger this, bigger that, more caffeine, more sugar, more whatever. Everything is be a star, be a star, be a star, be a star, be a star. And so the churches pick that up and think, well, we got to be stars too. We got to have our big boys out there. We got to have our big names out there. And you know what God's saying? He says, you know, I just do it the opposite. I didn't come to be ministered to, I came to minister. And we, we, we're not doing party in the park. And, and, you know, that was a good thing. We got to serve this community. And, and the whole community knows about it now. They all know that we did it. They all, they're going to be some stunned people when they find out we're not doing it. But, you know, one of the things we want to do right now is we're not trying to get big to draw everybody here. We're not trying to, I'm not trying to be such a godly man that everybody thinks I'm a great pastor. It's, you see, that's the channel of the world is, is to channel up the line and, and get a superstar up there. But in the kingdom of God, it's just the opposite. Just the very opposite. Now, if we can do the opposite and touch the world, we will massively change the world. The whole world is looking for superstars. The whole world is looking for, I mean, isn't it true? All the reality shows, everything else, they're, they're all, how, how big a wedding can you get? How big a, how much money can you spend? How much, you know, how big, much talent can you, you know, how many people could, you know, there's a new band out right now. I don't know. What they call the one that everybody's screaming about? weren't they just in New York had eighteen thousand people a record? you know all I know is the guy that drums for Jimmy, his dad drives their bus. And he said, "Where we go? just screaming, screaming, screaming anyway huh calling. calling is that it? yeah, that's it. They're from uh England, aren't they? Five guys that I think. Yeah. Like one direction. Oh, maybe One Direction. I don't know. Five guys, I think they were, you know, anyway, they were screaming, and I, and I look at that, and there's girls just, I mean, you know, they showed up, I just saw it on TV, they're, they're crying. <laughs> and I go, that's so weird. <laughs> we got over that with Elvis. What are you doing it again for? It's just weird. 
That's not what we want to do. We don't want to get to where, oh, we're so awesome. We want to just go out and minister. Instead of doing big things, we're going to do small things. And here's my, here's my heart cry, I think, that God's saying is, is each one of you can become who you really are, who God put, he put desires in you. And if you can, the more you grow in that and do that uniqueness that's you, we can really, and then what we can do is then that will spread to other people. Other can, people can start being who they are. See, right now what we got is people being their big and everybody's trying to be like them. Right? They all dress like them, try to sing like them. They try to be a rock star. They try to be a, you know, NFL football player or something like that. But we're, if we do the opposite, which is the kingdom of God, we're not out to be big. We're not out to have somebody recognize us as some great church, some great ministry, some great people. No, we're out there sneaking around, speaking the truth about how wonderful they are. How wonderful they are. How unique they are. Helping them stop trying to be like everybody else and be who they are. What if that really grew and grew? Just one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. Until it was spreading all over the world that people actually were encouraged to be themselves instead of somebody else. Wouldn't that be a world of peace and joy? Well, that's thinking pretty big if you ask me. That's a pretty, that's thinking pretty big. But the beautiful thing is we can start doing the small things right now. First of all, stop lying to yourself. And then stop lying to people. And tell them how bad they are. Tell them who they are. Tell them how they're chosen. Tell them how great they are. Father, I thank you that you called us. And invited us. And said, come, see for yourself. And I thank you that every person in this room right here right now has desires inside their heart and they may not have even found them yet. And they may be so covered up with insecurity and fear, anger, and bitterness, shame and guilt that they can't find them. And I pray, Father, that they can lay aside the old and pick up the new man and find out who they are. They're unique, they're wonderful, they're the way they should be. And then I pray that we'll hear these words to stop lying in our heart about ourselves. We are holy. We are awesome. We are wonderful. Why? Because you made us that way. And that's going to be forever. So the temporal is changeable, but that's not changeable. It's truth. Father, we commit ourselves. We have an intent in our heart to grow into the truth. In fact, you said in Ephesians 4, later on, you said, speaking the truth to one another, growing up into all aspects of Christ Jesus. And Father, help us, help us, this little group right here, help us to start being bolder, to speak the truth to each other. It may seem weird to us, it may seem odd, it may seem awkward at first, but you'll start getting real comfortable to speak the truth when we just tell each other, I love you, I appreciate you, I value you, please be you. Please be you. And I, Holy Spirit, we're, doing, we're going to focus in on some small things. You do the big thing and touch multitudes throughout the world. And you get all the glory because that's what we want. We just get to have you. And that's what we want. In Jesus' name we pray. And believe that you heard us. Amen. 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 Go out there and do some small things. And be you.